despite facing a revolt from members, the Women's Institute says it will not change its policy of welcoming, quote, anyone who is living as a woman to the organisation. Trustees of the organisation have been criticised for forcing this decision on local branches without a vote, following, a campaign, uh, following advice from campaign groups. Earlier this week, former Conservative leader William Haig also faced a backlash after he told women to get over their concerns. To discuss this, I am joined by author and broadcaster Amy Nickell and journalist and campaigner Joe Bartosz. Thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. So, Amy, can you tell me, why do you think that this is a good idea from the leadership of the WI? <laughs> Well, firstly, thank you for having me and what a great first show, Emma. Um, well, this subject is a bit of a non-argument really because the WI have been allowing transgender women to participate since the 1970s and there have been absolutely no problems. It's the Women's Institute, so of course they're going to be welcoming to all women and to do anything otherwise would not only be wrong but would also be um, not in agreement with the Equalities Act. Since 2010, we've allowed transgender women um, equal access Access to women's spaces, which would include the Women's Institute. So if they want to go and uh, make some jam and do some knitting, whatever they're up to, then of course they should be welcome, as should we all, all us women. But letting trans people into women's spaces isn't really in line with the Equality Act, is it, Jo? No, it isn't. Um, and I would also add that what defines a, a trans woman is that they're a man. I mean, they're male. I can be a trans woman because I'm a woman. So effectively, by allowing uh, men into the Women's Institute, they have made it mixed sex. And I think that matters because, you know, there are very few places um, that are single sex left. Um, and with regard to the fact that it has been effectively mixed sex for a long time, yes, it has, and that's fair. But what the current um, uh, chief executive has done is she's put forward a lot of edicts, she's put forward a lot of sort of um, so-called inclusion policies without any sort of democratic process. And I think, and then she's complained about being dragged into the culture wars. Well, frankly, she's the one that fired the first shot. So whether or not the membership were to vote that it's a good idea to make it mixed sex or otherwise, I think that democratic process has not been gone through and that's not acceptable. Amy, she's the one who fired the first shot. That's what Joe said there. So don't you think that, that the leadership of the WI should have asked the membership of the WI whether they actually wanted this change? Because clearly this is something new and they do seem to have chosen to drag themselves into the culture wars. It's not those objecting who are to blame here. This is, after all, the Women's Institute. It almost seems like a joke. I mean, I, I, first of all, I, I completely draw issue at the fact that you can call a, a trans woman a man. I think that is fundamentally wrong. All you've got to do is think of women like Paris Lees, India Willoughby, Sean Fay. Look up any of those women and tell me that they're not going to be welcome in a WI meeting should they so wish to go. And to call trans women men is, you know, we, we're not going to agree on anything if that's if that's your original premise that you're coming from. Um, it's also um, not recognised by medicine, science. Um, the, the, the whole start of the argument is wrong, but I think that um, the, the, this, the, the, Melissa Green, the leader of the Women's Institute, has made it clear that she doesn't want to be dragged into this culture war because it's also she's downplayed the actual um, what has any any of the um, any of the criticism that has come from within the group. I'm not even convinced that there was any membership uproar. I think there were two complaints, one of which was from a non-member. I'm not a member of the Women's Institute. I don't think Joe is a member of the Women's Institute. I, Emma, you, I don't think you are. I, I mean, really, let's leave this up to the Women's Institute. They've made it clear that they are welcoming to trans women. Let's leave it. It's not even up for debate. I'd like to leave it to the Women's Institute, but it seems that the members are not getting a say. Joe, you wrote a very good article about this <laughs> in Spike. This isn't, this, that isn't just, um, this isn't just, you know, one or two people complaining. This, this was a, a declaration that was signed by a number of women. And th isn't this fundamentally about the right to associate? Yeah, I mean, it's it's protected under under human rights legislation. I mean, that's something very, very fundamental that women have fought for. When the Women's Institute was formed, women didn't even have to vote. So, you know, we knew what a woman was then, and we still do now, if we're honest. Um, and I think, 
um, when you have a man in a group, quite often they, they dominate, and whether that's nature or nurture, and however they identify, they do. And if that wasn't the case, then we wouldn't have seen, for example, um, a, a man who was put on the front of the cover of the uh, Women's Institute's Internal House magazine. Now, that's, that's kind of quite astonishing, really. Um, and I think... Um, I think, you know, it's, it's not that I'm worried they're going to wave their willies in the jam. I mean, it's, it's, it's not that. The point is, they are men. And if you introduce them into a women's group, that's then a mixed sex group. And 700 people, women rather, within the Insta Women's Institute signed that petition. So it's not a fringe thing. It matters. And it's representative of what has happened within institutions across society, that lobby groups have changed policies by stealth. And there is quite often a massive disjuncture, a disparity between the sort of elite, if you like, at the the top of organisations who are forcing this on members. And if the members turn around and voted to accept that, that would be absolutely fine. That would be up to them. But the fact is, it, it hasn't been done like that. It's been imposed upon them, and that isn't acceptable. Since the 1970s, there have been absolutely in. no problems. And all you're doing is you're know. releasing genitals at the moment, Joe. You're reducing people <laughs> to what's in there. What, what's what's, really, what's living as a woman? What, I'm curious. If I give you an example of a, of, of a woman like Katie Montgomery, mm. Sean Faye, Paris, oh. are you happy <laughs> with your position to, to call those women men? Amy, are you, you happy afraid, to call those men women? To the members of the WI. <laughs> The law is happy to call them women. They go through life as women. They experience the same misogyny oh. that you experience as a woman. It is absolutely farcical that you could call them men. Of course they're men. No. <laughs> but of course they're men. I mean, that, that's ludicrous. What of course they're men. I mean, sorry, get your power back in It doesn't mean you're a woman. Basically, we just assume you're reducing people to this their gender. lesbians who have penises, because frankly, I'm pretty pissed off as a woman in a same-sex relationship that I can't now join any lesbian or groups of bisexual women without men coming along and saying they're lesbians. That is not acceptable. That well, is male dominance. That is male supremacy. That's the problem, isn't it, Amy? That this, this is undermining sex-based rights, and that also has an implication on homosexual couples, doesn't it? Of course. I think the, the implications that it has on homosexual couples is a completely different issue that I didn't actually expect to get into today. However, I think that if you cannot admit that we have gender incongruence and there are people who are going to live in a gender that isn't the sex they were assigned at birth, and if you're going to kind of laugh at that as a concept, then that isn't progression. And I think what the Women's Institute have done, which is, you know, you talked about how when they when women didn't have the vote, and we still had the Women's Institute. Again, they're proving themselves to be incredibly progressive and accurate and for women.